Welcome, we are here in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil for the Earth Summit. 193 countries are present here to talk about environment and sustainable development till the 22nd of June. The main objective is to make a greener world each day for one week. We're going to report on what's going on during this World Summit. Ten journalists from Africa are here with me in partnership with Canal France International and we're going to see this conference from an African perspective. There are 10 journalists. They come from 10 francophone and anglophone African countries. Burkina Faso, Senegal, Togo, Cameroon, Congo, Maurice Island, Namibia, Zambia, Tanzania and Uganda. Their mission, have an African glance to the Rio Conference on Sustainable Development. Before the trip to Brazil, our 10 journalists gathered in Paris have first to learn to know each other and how to work together. I can make this topic interesting because in the past a lot of people just ignore it. I'm sure it's not just in the African uh, setup but everywhere else. Environment hasn't been a major issue but we can make it more interesting and closer to the people through the way we present it to them. During four days, the journalists are going to work under the supervision of two French experts from CFI. At Rio de Janeiro, they have to produce a daily 30-minute show on the conference in order to master the sustainable development issues in Africa. That's why she said it, the, the soundbite, 4,000. Yeah, but in this time, I think it's better you said it than her. You know, in Africa, there are problems environmental that are not necessarily the same as the problems that we find in Asia or in America. Donc, nous, en tant que journalistes africains, il est question pour nous de traiter les sujets environnementaux qui collent avec les réalités que nous vivons sur le terrain en Afrique. Et c'est là tout l'intérêt pour nous, journalistes africains, d'être présents. Parce qu'il est question pour nous d'aller à Rio, traiter des sujets, rendre fidèlement compte aux populations africaines et amener les décideurs à prendre conscience de la nécessité de faire des efforts, de mettre des gros moyens pour protéger la terre, pour protéger la nature. Once the training over, direction to Rio de Janeiro and Antonio Carlos Jobim Airport. The journalists are tired but ready for the adventure. <laughs> ah, oui, c'est vraiment formidable d'arriver dans le cadre de ce sommet planétaire des Nations Unies sur le développement durable. Je crois que nous allons nous y atteler pour relayer l'information jusqu'au continent africain. The challenge is huge because the show will be broadcast on 77 African channels. Rio, the showcase of Brazil, the city of carnivals and famous beaches. Twenty years ago, the first United Nations Conference on Environment and Sustainable Development was organized there. During two weeks, 172 countries discussed about the future of the planet. On the opening session, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Boutros Boutros Ghali, sets the tone. Mr. President, I would like to make a toast to the health of Mr. President Kaller, the people and the Brazil as a country, and to finish to the health of Earth. A toast for environment, this would mark the beginning for sustainable development. An obvious desire for the 173 head of states with the Agenda 21, the action plan for the 21st century. The head of state will sign the Framework Convention on Climate Change and Biodiversity. The roadmap for the next 20 years has just been adopted. Two decades later, it's time to assess. The main concerns for Rio 20 Plus conference is the green economy in the context of poverty reduction and the possible creation of the United Nations Agency for Environment. It's another appointment with history. Unlike the summit in 1992, 133 heads of state are expecting to attend the conference as from the 20th of June. Many world leaders like Barack Obama, David Cameron, and German Chancellor Angela Merkel will not be present. Those who will be here will meet with difficulties on agreeing on the green economy and the financing of sustainable development. Uganda is mainly an agricultural country with almost 80% of population depending on it either directly 
or indirectly. However, lack of enough money to invest in agriculture, poor methods of farming, lack of adequate transport to the market, and low purchasing power because of poverty has made many farmers not to benefit from agriculture. Ibrahim Mugwanya, a photojournalist from Uganda, is one of them. Farming is kind of a hobby, but it's turning out to be um, a job. Mugwanya started investing on his two-acre piece of land with block chicken, goats, and turkeys. Unlike many farmers on a commercial level, Mugwanya opted to use mainly local feeds, which has given him an upper hand over others. People are more careful about their health these days. Uh, most of the food that is uh, genetically modified is not healthy. And that's why we opted to go organic so that people can live uh, more healthier. Though Mugwanya thought, like many farmers on this nature, he has realized that the little he has set up has played a big role in helping his family. I've also gained in the sense that he, if I sell eggs, for example, or if I sell some produce, I could get school fees to pay for my children. There. He would probably have done better, but the bottlenecks of accessing financial services put him off. What I would appeal to the government is to provide us with the funds so that every farmer can be able to access those funds and to sensitize farmers on modern farming such that what would they produce is of quality. With a country where the majority of people are still poor and some live on less than a dollar a day, Mugwanya's vision of creating employment for himself and also being in a position to feed himself could probably be a solution to fighting poverty and create sustainable development. Sustainable development is quite uh, difficult to explain and to understand. Every day we're going to try to explain it to you in simple words. Today it's about uh, green economy. I've just been in Rio de Janeiro for two days and I'm struck by the huge number of people and organizations preaching a green economy. This is at the Earth Summit, which is driven by the initiative to make the Earth green. This theme is aimed at making United Nations member countries promote economic growth, at the same time sustain natural resources like water, land, energy supplies, forests and vegetation. Many countries are working towards this, but is this a cosmetic exercise by huge international companies and developed countries or can it be achieved? Thousands of people, including locals in Brazil, are not in support of this because they believe it's just a capitalist exercise and not aimed at protecting the earth. Although a green economy is seen as the future, some sections are still not very optimistic this can be achieved. Well, that's all for today. See you tomorrow for another magazine on the Earth Summit in Rio. Bye-bye.